the way it is. How do you feel about this weekend and looking back? You know what, 30 years flies by, but some things stand still. And it's kind of like, a, I don't know how to really describe it, but all those guys, we haven't seen each other. And I did the Joe Rose show this morning, and Joe knows when we played with the Dolphins, we just had our 25th reunion uh, five years ago. And it's like you haven't seen somebody in about a year. It's, it's a fraternity that is just unbelievable. These guys is ragtag bunch. We laugh now rather than you to see how far it's come. And I, I was almost cutting Coach Snellberger off last night when he said, he goes, we had the heck center. We had the practice field. I'm going to that. That was it. All right, Coach, because you should have, the, the dorm should have been blown up at the time. We didn't have anything else. That was it. We, you know, we were sold on a dream. And, and the thing about it was when that dream became a reality, you know, the hurricane football was born. And that's the way I really look at it. I mean, I, and I always thought, that uh, 30 years later that, you know, still, that we didn't get the respect, and especially Coach, didn't get the respect that even the others did that came in to move the program along. And uh, so to come back and have, uh, you know, President Shalala and them uh, honors with the, the, the crystal and, and all the things, man. I mean, just, you know, all we want to do is be remembered. I mean, uh, our heydays are over, you know, so uh, to be remembered like that was special. And to see these guys, I'm telling you, it's a friendship, it's a brotherhood that, uh, I'm talking to Ian Sinclair like uh, I haven't seen him since last year. And I, I really mean that. It's just, it's great seeing the guys. It's great being back. What do you think? Do you follow Miami now? Oh, yeah, always. Uh, and I'm up in Akron, Ohio. Believe me, you've got Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame. And they hate us. And I hate them for it. So, <laughs> believe me, I don't care. I wear my cane stuff proudly all the time. My wife's an Ohio State fan. Uh, my niece graduated from Ohio State. My sister was from Michigan. Uh, so I got to hear from everybody. And, uh, and, and I coach LeBron James at St. Vincent St. Mary, which is Notre Dame fanatics. So, I mean, I heard it all the time. And I still do. But, again, I wear my cane stuff all the time. Uh, my wife has a Ohio State chair. I have a uh, University of Miami chair that we take out with us. And people always ask when we're sitting outside with you. Uh, I'm a kid. Oh, no. I wear my used stuff all the time. I'm the biggest guy. It's on TV or radio up there. It's talking trash. And I love it because, uh, again, uh, I think they're all a little jealous of how far the U has come. Uh, you, talking, talking about um, Akron and LeBron James, how, I know you get this a lot, but how great do you really think Le LeBron James could have been had he, you know, followed football instead of basketball. He'd be, a, he'd have been an All-American in college if he win. He'd probably be an All-Pro now as a, a receiver. And I, and I say receiver because everybody talks about slash tight end. But the way this kid runs, uh, he was a four-five kid. He said last year basketball he ran a four. Six. I guarantee you he did. He ran a four-five. And it was. <laughs> he used to take his helmet off and play scout team offense against. He said, "I tell you what, he's a hell of a quarterback. And he really was, but we couldn't afford to play him." They played him at receiver, and again, I used to look at the coordinator where we were talking. I said, "Hey, throw the fight. I mean, what, what are you gonna do?" I mean, uh, his mom, Gloria, God bless her. I know Glow for a long time. She used to tell me, Jay, uh, don't let my baby get hurt. And I had to tell her, go look at your baby. He's bigger than anybody out there. All right, he's a situation of athlete. Ain't gonna worry about him there. And what happened? He broke his wrist playing basketball in Chicago. But that's the only reason he didn't play a senior year either. Uh, very dedicated kid. Never missed a meeting. And after practice, no matter what, he'd go to the gym and shoot for two hours. I mean, that's the kind of, kind of dedication this kid had. Never late to anything, not a problem at school. And to give back to the community like he has. And, and he just had a big giveaway where he came out and gave uniforms to the school. And of course, who had to wear the uniform out on the field? LeBron. He had his football uniform on it. So he goes back, puts a helmet on, and catches ball sometimes, too. So uh, he'd have been dying. He'd have been dying by McGuire. It's just, but his dedication and his athleticism uh, and his work ethic, uh, that, I don't think that would have been a problem for the helmet. Which you know, my back on the path. Oh yeah, I, I tell you right now, and, and, and one big reason is Artie Kehoe is back with the offensive line. I'm gonna tell you right now, when you looked at us struggling at times, Artie Kehoe is not here. And I tell you, I, I truly believe he is a difference maker. And Al Golder, uh, to have Coach Snowman speak so highly of him, and then Coach Gold, where he has talked to us. Uh, I, I, I'm really excited because I, I really think it's time. It's time for us to get back. Uh, I'm not worried about the NCAA. I just like them to a pulp anyway. So, you know, the hell with them. Uh, and that, you can quote me on that one all the time. But I just think that he is in the right position. He has the right mindset to take over because when you're at the U, it, it's a totally different feeling. I, I don't know anybody else. I, mean, I don't care what anybody else says. It's a totally different way we go about, around, about things down here. And I think Al Gold has brought that attitude back to Miami. And again, with guys like Artie back and all, oh, I tell you, I'm excited. I think the sky's the limit, and I think they're going to be in a national championship picture, if not uh, very recently, in the next year or so. When you say it's, it's 
you know, it's time to get back. It's been a little oh, bit yeah. of wait for you. To, oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, again, I get abused you know, <laughs> because I am a, uh, such a huge supporter fan and, and I wear my stuff. So, hey, I, I was in Chicago last year when we lost to Notre Dame and I was with uh, some Notre Dame people. And I uh, drove back. And, I'll tell you, that was an eight-hour drive back to Ohio, too, the next day. And I had to put up with that crap. But, uh, you know, I said, again, yeah, we'll get you next year. But, see, they can't get my go. You know, I'm a cane. I got my ring. That's all I got to tell them. You know, I, I've got one. So I, 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 they don't get to it. They don't buy I guess because I'm probably brain dead used to that stuff up there because I get beat up with it all the time. But, no, it's time. It's time to get back and, and payback's tough because I'm not a guy that talks a lot of trash about the U. I just say I love the U and we're going to be great and all that. And the people that do talk to trash, so it's coming. It's time. I really do. I, I sincerely believe that. Is there any sort of wisdom you can impart on, on this year's team? Uh, this year's team is to, to have the desire and listen to the coaching staff and what they're doing. And the thing about it is you've got to have that diehard, nasty UM attitude where it's every second of every minute of every play of every game. If they do that with the talent they have and the coaching staff they have in place, again, I just see that they have too much talent and too many possibilities, and, and they're going to win. They're going to be right back in the picture again. And again, it's that belief. And that's what we had in 83. And I, I tell you, I called us a ragtag bunch because we were. We were from all over the world. We were guys that, and I, I don't know how to explain it, but we weren't the biggest, strongest, fastest guys in the world, not all of us. But I tell you what, we, we were probably one of the nastiest bunches on the field. We feared no one. And again, if you can put up with one hour instead of practice, you can sure as hell put up with a game. So, I mean, <laughs> hey, coach was tough, but he pushed us beyond where we thought we could ever go. And then to win and see that, uh, again, he's mentioned last night that nothing's impossible. And I totally agree with him. And I've taken that with me for 20-some years of coaching. And I don't care where I coach at or who I'm coaching or what kind of team or how small they are, we will win. This is the way it is. That's instilled in us, and I think that's what these kids now have to buy into. But they have to believe that, you know, forget NC, forget what happened last year. I don't care about any of that stuff. I don't care about it. You are that talented, and you can win. But it takes that kind of desire and effort, you know, and that's a game way. Um, how would you define what it means to really be a hurricane in your way? I tell you what, if you're not a hurricane, I don't know if you'd understand. It's just that way. I think it's just. I don't know how special I can tell you it is. I just tell you that it's that special. And I've never had a feeling like that. I, I never have, and uh, it'll never change. Uh, I mean, I don't care losing times, different coaches. My love for the Hurricanes and what it meant in my life, no. It's, uh, it's very special.